The Morrison government's announcement, as Andrew said there, to fund a $600 million gas-fired power plant in the Hunter region comes as a new report claims no new coal mines, oil or gas fields should be built anywhere in the world. The report by the International Energy Agency suggests relatively wealthy countries should phase out coal-fired power plants by the end of the decade. The sale of new petrol and diesel cars should be banned by 2035 and global investment in clean energies should double to more than $6 trillion a year within nine years. The report does not support continued investment in fossil fuels like coal or gas. And of course, it comes on the day of Australia's announcement, the government's announcement of this gas plant in the Hunter. Let's bring in Director of Climate and Energy at the Australia Institute, Richie Merzian. Richie, thanks for your time. What do you say to the government, the energy minister's argument that the peaking gas plant is needed to complement renewable energies because it's not always uh, windy and the sun's not always shining. Kieran, it's concerning. We know that we don't need this gas peaker. The government's own energy regulator uh, told us that we don't need a lot more dispatchable gas. Uh, we know the private sector don't want to build this because no one stepped up before Angus Taylor's deadline of the 30th of April. And so we as, as shareholders in this project are going in blind. There's no business case for it. And at the end of the day, gas makes electricity more expensive as well as being high emissions. So it's just concerning all around. He says it's to complement the renewables because this is dispatchable. Is there enough dispatchable renewable energy now, are the batteries sufficient enough to provide that sort of capacity? The projections that we have from the energy market regulators do not show a need for this type of investment and the private sector don't want to build it either so there isn't that kind of market demand. We have the technology we need now to cleanly back in renewable energy Curry Curry is going to be part of the Hunter Renewable Energy Zone that the New South Wales government is pursuing. Nothing here stacks up. Also, why wasn't this announced during the actual budget? Why wait a good three weeks after, after the uh, minister's own deadline as well? If there's one thing that's clear from the international report from the IA last night is that we don't need these new fossil fuel projects. We have the technologies available and we know that from the energy market regulator that we don't need this project. So the energy market regulator says there is no shortfall at 2023 when Liddell closes. And, and that was confirmed, Kieran, as well by the Liddell task force that uh, Minister Taylor commissioned alongside the New South Wales government. There isn't this major shortfall that needs filling from gas and our experience with gas has had us burnt before. Look, we've tripled gas supply on the east coast of Australia and what, we've let, what we're left with is a tripling of the gas price that has led to more expensive electricity, not cheaper electricity. We don't need more gas for our electricity sector and this is just going to be a waste of taxpayers' money when it could be otherwise going to a variety of other projects that are actually low emissions and will meet many of the needs that we have in the market going forward, which is to bring the security services as well as generation. And we know big batteries tick yeah. those boxes. So what, what's your response then? OK, so that's the supply issue. You, you, you repudiate the argument on that front. What about the price issue? Because if you've got more gas out there, the Prime Minister says there's more supply, the prices come down. Is that, is that a fair conclusion to make? I mean, how many times must we go through through this rigmarole? I mean, gas prices have only increased despite gas tripling in supply. Gas has not been uh, the saviour of electricity prices. It has not helped manufacturing either. Gas has only led to benefiting gas companies. And most of those gas companies are multinationals and don't pay much tax. I'm not sure who's really benefiting from these gas projects. It's certainly not the Australian public. It's not electricity users. Uh, and it has many people scratching their heads. The best thing the government could do right now is actually invest in the renewable energy zones outlined by the New South Wales government, invest in big batteries, invest in demand response and other technologies to shore up the electricity grid because right now we don't need more gas. 
With the um, other story around today, the ARENA, Renewable Energy Agency, having its scope broadened to include carbon capture and storage and uh, blue hydrogen, uh, given they are key parts of the government's response on energy, why should they not be funded in, that, in this regard? I'm going to say something controversial here, Kieran. Maybe we should let the Renewable Energy Agency only fund renewable energy. Why must we water it down to <laughs> also fund projects that support fossil fuels? Carbon capture and storage has been a colossal failure, over $1.3 billion spent by federal and state governments, and we don't have a single operational commercial facility to show for it. It's been a wage of major waste of money. Even the uh, R&D fund from the industry itself has toned down its funding and its rhetoric around it. Do you, if we remember what clean coal was all about, it was premised on carbon capture and storage. We're seeing carbon capture and storage come back on the field again now to back in hydrogen. We just don't need it. We know we can make hydrogen in a zero emissions way using renewable energy and water. Let's go down that path. That's what ARENA should be funding. Let's not water it down to fund more fossil fuel projects that are just going to be at all our expense. You look at, at that International Energy Agency report released overnight, it says no more fossil fuels. Are there any of those goals that are likely to be met? I know in some jurisdictions there will be no more petrol vehicles beyond that date of 2035. What about the goal of doubling investment in clean energies to $6 trillion a year within nine years? Is that on track? It's getting closer and closer. We're seeing major investment funds, institutional funders shift to clean energy, start weeding out fossil fuel companies. And it makes sense, not just from a climate perspective, but also from a good investment. If we look at the ASX 300, the sector that performed the worst in the last decade were fossil fuel companies, were the energy sector. So it hasn't been a good return on investment. And now we have a relatively conservative organization in the International Energy Agency basically saying that the future, one that is compliant with the Paris Agreement, doesn't see any more need to invest in fossil fuel projects. So any institutional investors should be taking this seriously. And we're going to see a lot of that money shift towards clean finance. And if I'm the Australian government, I'd be worried right now about a major portfolio of new fossil fuel projects that might not actually see the green light at the end of the tunnel. Richie Merzian from the Australia Institute's Climate and Energy Program. Thanks. My pleasure. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.